Hi everyone, it's me, Pat, and I am getting ready for a birthday celebration. Do you know why? Do you know whose birthday it is? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Happy birthday! It's Pentecost. We are celebrating the birthday of the church. Happy birthday. What an exciting time. We get to celebrate the birthday of the church together. Now, how can a church have a birthday, you might be asking? Well, think back. There was 50 days in the season of Easter. And during those 50 days, Jesus made many visits to his followers and his disciples and reminded them of his teachings and reminded them of what they were going to have to do while they, while he was, once he was gone. They were scared. They were worried. And they hadn't seen him, and they didn't know what they were going to do. Well, 50 days after Easter, something amazing happened. The apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's what the celebration of Pentecost is. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus hadn't left them. He would, had filled them with the Holy Spirit so that they would understand what to do, so they would be able to carry on the message that Jesus had taught them. And when we think of the Holy Spirit, when we think about Pentecost, we think about wind and fire and flames. So lots of our celebrating is, of course, all about wind and fire and flames. Now, we have a, during, we're having a birthday celebration. We have streamers, we have sparkler, we've got balloons, we've got signs. What else do you need at a birthday party? Yes, you need cake. We're going to bake a cake together. And I can hardly wait. Now, earlier today, I went around to all of your houses and I dropped off a package, a birthday gift package. When you unwrap it, it comes to you in a box that looks like this. And when you open the box, there is a whole bunch of activities that you can do with your family to celebrate Pentecost. Now, it seems a little bit overwhelming at first. What do I do with all the stuff that's inside here? Well, inside the box, there's this great little handout, and it tells you the story of Pentecost, and it has all of the instructions and even some more ideas of what you could do together to celebrate Pente Pentecost. Now, you may want to do all of them. You may want to do one a day. You may want to only do a few of them. But what I thought I would do is to help you pick which activities you may want to do with your family is I'm going to go through the activities in the box and show you how to do them and what they should look like. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is bake a cake. Now, inside there are hold it in, two different cake recipes. You might want to bake your own cake. Maybe you have a family favorite cake that you always use. But just in case, or if you want to just try something new, together, I am going to go through and bake these two cakes so you can see how it's done and what you might want to do at home with your family. There's the two cake recipes. Now one is in a regular cake pan and the other one is just in a mug. So you might want to make just enough for yourself. I'll give it a try. You can follow along. Okay, so the first cake that I'm going to make, according to these instructions, is called a wacky chocolate cake. Now, maybe what makes it wacky is because we mix it right in the pan. Kind of like that. Not a lot of dishes. So, the first thing you're going to do is in the pan, you're going to combine, and I've already pre-measured my ingredients, one and a half cups of flour, Now, in here, I've combined them all because you want them all mixed together. I have, where's my teaspoon? One teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, three tablespoons of cocoa, and some salt. And I put it all in here together just to mix it a little bit more. And then you need 
one cup of sugar. Right into the pan you're going to bake again. Now, I kind of like using a big spoon like this. This is what it looks like. And I'm just going to mix this all together. Now, some of you at home might have what's called a sifter. And that means you can sift all the ingredients together, all in one container, and then they'll come out all mixed. But I didn't have one here. So I'm just going to mix them all by hand. Now, here's kind of the cool part. A little bit different than probably, well, it's different than any other cake I've made, that's for sure. So once we have everything all mixed together, all of my dry ingredients, now I have to add all of my wet ingredients. So what I'm going to do is just make, okay, so there it is, all nice and smooth. And right in the middle, I'm going to make three kind of holes. Not digging very deep, but three separate holes because that's what the instruction says to do. And in one of them, I am going to put five tablespoons of oil which I have already measured out. It's just a little bit easier that way. I do have to do one teaspoon of vanilla. So I will do that right here in the other hole that I've made. Okay, over on this side, beautiful. And I need one tablespoon I'm going to double check, always double check your ingredients. I need one tablespoon of vinegar. Then it says to take one cup of lukewarm water. So not hot, not cold. And just pour that right over top of the whole thing. And now I'm going to mix it all together. And there it is all mixed up, ready to go. And I'm going to put it in the oven. I turned the oven on to preheat it before I even started mixing it. So I'm going to go put it in the oven and then I'm going to come back and we'll make the next cake, which is the one that's called vanilla cake in a mug. It's kind of cool we get to try both today. I'll let you know how they taste. Okay, now I'm just going to mix together our vanilla cake in a mug. Probably the most important thing to start with is make sure you have a mug that's going to be safe in the microwave. And then it's all pretty easy. You just put all of your dry ingredients in, then your wet ingredients, and mix it up. Now, I've already combined my dry ingredients. It's really like four tablespoons of flour. That's it, some sugar, some baking powder, which remember is different than baking soda. Baking soda only reacts when you put liquid to it. Baking powder reacts to liquid and to heat. So it's important uh, that you have baking powder, not baking soda. And then I just take my dry ingredients and I put them into the mug. And then, there we go. And then I add my wet ingredients and I've already pre-measured them. So in here there's some milk, some vanilla uh, and some oil. And you can use any kind of milk, okay? It could be um, if you happen to have almond milk or soy milk or regular milk, it doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to add my wet ingredients to my dry, just like before, except way smaller and pretty easy to stir in this mug. Okay. Now it does say that you can add some sprinkles in here or some chocolate chips, which fortunately I have some chocolate chips. But you don't want too many because you don't have a lot in there. So I poured some, just about a quarter cup, not even a quarter cup, I should say, probably about a half of that, an eighth of a cup, and stir it in. Make sure it's all stirred together really nicely. Okay, there, this looks like vanilla, uh, vanilla cake. Now I'm going to go put it in the microwave. It says for a minute and 10 seconds, my, my, my microwave is a little bit older than that, so you do have to keep an eye on it. So, I'll go put it in the microwave and we'll see what happens. Cake in a mug. And there it is. Now, they say to cook it until it's firm to the touch, which it is, uh, but I have a pretty old microwave and I had to go for almost two minutes. Uh, it does say about a minute, minute and 10 seconds, but my microwave took a little bit longer than that. I'm just going to let it cool. Put some icing on it, because 
that's always best too. Although you could have it with ice cream or um, whipped cream too. And we'll do a taste test. Now, when you open your kit, you're going to be excited because there's lots of fun things to do in there. And of course, it does come with this set of instructions. And there's also instructions attached to most of the individual activities. So I thought I'd just go through it with you. Uh, and that might help you decide where you want to start. So this tells the story of Pentecost and reminds us about the significance of wind and fire in the story of Pentecost. Uh, when you go through it, there's one of those fun activities to do as a family called a Mad Lib. So that might be something to start with together. Something else in the kit that's really important is this little card. It says hello and it has a little picture on it that you might like to color. But what I really want you to know is that it is a postcard and it is already stamped. So why don't you try to think of somebody uh, from your church family uh, that you miss, that you haven't seen in a while, or you want them to know that you're thinking about them. Maybe it's somebody from your family that you're grateful for, that you just want to send a hello to. You want to send a hug through the mail. So on this card, it's already stamped. So all you have to do is put their address on it. Uh, it already has a little message on it and you can sign your name. So that's a good one. And it reminds other people too, to celebrate the joy of Pentecost. As well, there is a word search that comes separate. Those are always fun to do. And I know lots of my Kids Connect kids love doing puzzles and solving puzzles. Now this one is nice because you can just color it. You can hang it up somewhere. But it also gives you a website to go to if you would like more coloring pictures like this one. Now, remember, a big part of Pentecost was people started hearing a wind blowing. So, to help us think about the wind, this sheet gives you two different paper airplanes that you can make. Uh, the good thing is you could fly them in your bedroom and nothing would get wrecked. You might want to try making the two different kinds and see which one flies better for you. So, have fun with paper airplanes. For many of you, the first thing you'll see is Play-Doh, because we all love Play-Doh. At the bottom of the box is this card, and it's been laminated, and it says Pentecost. Use Play-Doh to make tongues of fire above the heads of the disciples. And so, when you open your Play-Doh, you might want to use it to fill in the flames. Also on the back is another activity that you can do with your Play-Doh. Now, this is a new container of Play-Doh, but you can always use the Play-Doh that you have at home too and have a whole bunch of other colors involved in your picture on this side or when you're doing the flames on this side. Now along with the word search, when you open it up, there is a word scramble, and there is also a crossword puzzle. But there were also several, several sheets in here, such as this one. I give you a few ideas and a picture to color about writing a prayer. Sometimes it's, it, it helps to write our ideas down. So I want you to think about your church family, think about your experiences or your memories from church, Think about the people in your life that you're grateful for. Now, so you might want to use this one. There's a nice little letter here, a form that you can use. And remember, journals can be about writing, but they can be about pictures as well. Another one that might help inspire you and give you some ideas to write about. And there's one with the dove, which is also an important symbol of Pentecost and then this letter form, Dear God. And you can fill it in with pictures or words or ideas. Maybe you want to tell your ideas to an adult or an older brother and sister who could write them down for you. And then you can sign your name. These letters that you get in your kit spell out Pentecost. 
and they can all be decorated and colored any way you want. You might want to do a few other activities with them too while you're decorating and coloring them. What if you thought of words that started with each letter that are about church, that are about family, that are about things that you're thankful for, that are about seeing Jesus in others. Once that's done, you can hang them up any way you want. You might want to hang them up, like I did these letters behind me, but in the kit, there's also a string. So you can undo the string and spread it out and tape or clothespin each of the letters onto the string and then hang it like a banner. So I thought that would be fun and it would be something that lots of people in your family could do or you could work on on your own. Now the last thing that I want to do in the kit is go through the instructions for the stained glass art. Now, as you know already, a dove, flames, the wind, they're all really important symbols in Pentecost. But another symbol that's very important to the church is that of fish. So when you do the stained glass activity, there's enough tissue paper here that you could do the fish or the flame or you could do both. And that's the one that I'm going to show you how to do right now. Now to do the stained glass art, you have to get a couple of things ready first. First one is to take all of these pieces of tissue paper and rip them up into smaller pieces or cut them into smaller pieces and squares that you're going to place on them. Okay, so you'll have to do that. The other thing that you will have to do is when you decide what shape you want to use, or if you're going to do both, I want you to cut out the middle of it. So I am going to cut this in half, just to make it a little bit easier to work with, and because I'm only doing one of them. And I want to cut out the middle. So a nice way to start is to just loosely bend it. Don't fold it with a, a fold line, we don't want that. Just bend it loosely and use your scissors because now you have a nice, I'll hold it up a little better. Now you have a nice little slit in the middle. Can you see it there? And that makes it easy for me to put my scissors in and cut out the middle of the flame. So, as you can see, I've cut out the middle and I've cut my tissue paper into all these little squares. Now this next part you might need a little bit of a hand with. So you had one big piece of this paper, it's called MacTac, and it's sticky on one side and it's clear. And that's what helps you make it the stained glass. So I cut it in half because I'm only doing the flame and it's way easier to work with if you only use half at a time. Then, and this is the part I needed help with, they're hard to start. You have to peel the backing off. Now this side is sticky, so you wanna be careful. Make sure you have a clean work area. So, peel this off. I don't need it anymore. And I have a very sticky piece of Mac Tac right here in front of me. And now I'm going to take my flame and I'm going to place it as close to the edge as I can. Most of this will get cut off, so you don't have to worry a whole bunch. It's hard to see exactly where it is there. There we go. Now, if I pick it up, this is what it looks like. All right, so here's the sticky side. I put my flame there with the black outline down because I do want that to show through when I cut it out. Now, I take all of my papers, my pieces, sorry, of tissue paper, and I just am sticking them right on to the very sticky part of my Mac tag. Now, remember, flames are such an important symbol for Pentecost, 
And typically when we look at fire, we see reds and oranges and yellows. So scatter your red and orange and yellow pieces all over it. Mix them up. Make sure that you get all the colors in there so it looks like a flame. Make sure that you've covered all of the spaces. There's nothing showing through and that you've overlapped lots of the tissue paper. And when I hold it up this way, I can actually see that I've missed a few spots. So I'm just going to rip a couple of pieces off here because we want to make sure all the clear spots are covered. Oh, there we go. Okay, now take it. Okay, so it's all covered like this. This was the side I was working on because it's sticky. This is the part that you see. And I just take it and fold it all the way over, press it down nice and smooth so there's no wrinkles. You can smooth it out. Sometimes you got to make sure, or sometimes, sorry, you might have to run your finger over it a few times. Make sure that it's nice and Sticky, stuck together, and now I'm going to cut it out. And I will have created my stained glass flame. So I'm just about done cutting it out. I'm pretty excited. I think it'll look great. And there it is. There's my flame. There's one side where you can see the black. This is the back of it. Now, if you put this on a window, it becomes stained glass. You can see through it. Wouldn't it be cool if you had this hanging somewhere close to your Pentecost banner that you made earlier? That might be a nice idea. Or just hang it in the corner of the window somewhere in your house to help you remember that the Holy Spirit lives in us. How good does that look? All I have to do now is put some icing on it. And there it is with icing on it. I can hardly wait to cut a piece. Now, in your kit, as well as the recipe for this cake, there are candles. Because remember, it is a birthday celebration. So you can take those candles. Here we go. And together, you and your family can sing happy birthday to the church. There we go. Perfect. And even though we can't actually get together in our church building, what's important to remember as we celebrate this birthday of the church is that the church is not just this building. It's the people. It's how we act. It's how we treat others. The church is the people. And so to each one of you, as we celebrate Pentecost, as we celebrate the birthday of the church, it's to you that I say, happy birthday. <laughs>